A playlist for previous Movie Flaw and Awe videos can be found in the top right hand corner. Now our Flaw and Awe review style is a bit different, but I hope you enjoy watching them as much as I enjoy making them. And instead of going over the rules in every video, I'll post a basic breakdown of the rules in the description box for those interested. And that allows us to get right into Night of the Living Dead from all the way back in 1968. Brother Johnny and Sister Barbara are driving to a cemetery out of town. There's nice visuals along the way that fit the area with the winding Pennsylvania roads and a sign all shot to shit. <laughs> Credits over live action is a nope and that goes for all movies new and old. Johnny, it takes you five minutes. Yeah, five minutes to put the wreath on the grave and six hours to drive back and forth. There's good chemistry between the siblings. <laughs> but obnoxious exposition is painfully obvious. Mother wants to remember, so we trot 200 miles into the country and she stays at home. You might as well look at the damn camera and speak right to the audience. For an old film, they did a solid job letting the atmosphere and environment spill into this moment. It was from right over there. I jumped out at you from behind the tree and Grandpa got all excited and he shook his fist at me and he said, Boy, you be damned to hell. Johnny. You're still afraid. Stop it now, I mean it. They're coming to get you, Barbara. They're coming for you, Barbara. Stop it, you're acting like a child. Look, there comes one of them now. Here he comes now. I'm getting out of it. Sure, he's being obnoxious to his sister, but there's a childish playfulness that nicely contrasts with what's about to happen. A sudden, unexpected attack kicks things off, and the subtle use of the Dutch angle here captures a moment that stands out. Yeah, this, uh, tussle is soft. Now, we gotta be fair, but we will not punish older movies and or independent ones by bombarding them with flaws. We only flaw moments that truly interfere with the scene. Those aren't no running shoes. Get them out of here. This ghoul immediately goes for the door handle and then he problem solves with a rock. Now this might turn off some zombie fans that prefer the brain dead type, but I do encourage newer fans to appreciate this version for what it is. And it does help raise the tension and the danger that Barbara is in. This music drills into my brain. Under 10 minutes and we have a smooth and simple setup. Since Johnny had the car keys, that leads Barbara to take shelter in the first house she comes across. Yo, why is there a jump scare here? Sound effects are missing here and it's too important of a moment to skip them. That overacting is harsh. It'd be jarring in a silent film. Damn, that is over the top. <laughs> Give me some of that gore porn. A freaked out Barbara goes to run outside and we are introduced to Ben using a jarring ass edit. Ben is wonderfully played by Dwayne Jones. And yep, that is where The Walking Dead's Morgan Jones got his name from. The homage was given to Morgan's son, who was named Dwayne Jones. Yo, careful buddy, you might actually hurt him. Ben rescues Barbara just in time from a ghoul intruder, while even more ghouls are making their way to the house. And this gives the feel of a dangerous wave of these undead creatures. He's moving his eyes during a close up. Barbara being in shock works early on. However, too much of that nonsense frustrates the hell out of the viewer, which is something they actually overcorrected in the remake. When we get to that point of frustration, I'll just say too much 
and will flaw it. Aw, oh, look at all those boards. It's like someone stored them there for this exact purpose, which is what they did. Not knowing where they would get the boards from, they laughed and said F it and figured viewers wouldn't mind. And for the most part, they didn't. He's got a friggin' door, and she's confused thinking she's in the movie Lost Boys with stakes that are barely good enough to kill a vampire. 50 or 60 of those things just standing there. I started to drive. I just plowed right through them. They didn't move. They didn't run. Now that's the movie I want to see. I wish they had budget for that movie. He grabbed me and he ripped at me. I think you should just calm down. Yo, Ben doesn't want to hear nothing from this crazy white lady. Johnny! No! My brother is not dead! Really, nigga? Ooh, fuck. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine. But you just can't get into it because they would never understand. When first reports began filtering in, newsmen and law enforcement agencies... Too much. By now, we understand. She's in shock. And we're looking for a little interaction between these two characters, and we're just not getting it. At the top of the stairs, when Ben goes to remove the body with her face eaten away, for a split second, yes, it is just a split second, but it's distracting because person gets her face eaten away, he goes to move it, you're gonna look at her face. Just as it's getting old with only the two of them, more characters spill up from the basement. You're insane. The cellar's the safest place. I'm telling you, they can't get in here. And I'm telling you, those things turned over our car. We were damn lucky to get away at all. Now you tell me those those things can't get through this lousy pile of wood? Compared to the silent, shocked woman, this new group arguing over what part of the house will be the safer choice is explosive, adding more interest. Sound design here is extra weak sauce. Concept here is cool. Suddenly attacked from the window with some classic gore. Zombie ass? Nice. Oh look, she's for sale. Must be a prostitute. Zombie tits too, huh? Nice. I mean, gross. If you're stupid enough to go die in that trap, that's your business. However, I am not stupid enough to follow you. It is tough for the kid that old man is so stupid. Come on up here, honey. That's a thick ass! This place is ridiculous. Look at this. There's a million weak spots up here. There could be 50 million of those things out there. Harry is unlikable as hell, but the actor brought some damn good energy to the role. It has been established that persons who have recently died have been returning to life and committing acts of murder. It's cool getting an outside update, and it fit the time period nicely. Dr. Grimes. Dr. Grimes. Interesting. Tom, were you sure about the phone? The phone is dead out. If I could only call the folks, they're going to be so worried about us. I feel what they're going for, but the dialogue here is just rocky. <laughs> now the zombies here, even slow moving, feel like a threatening force. Trying to refuel the truck, a fearful Tom excitedly squeezes the pump handle, spilling gas near the torch. And this leads to a surprising end to the young couple, which then leads to a very cool and a very gross zombie barbecue montage. I mean, for real. They literally take turns pulling meat out of the truck and then sit on the grass for a damn zombie picnic. It's like they filmed the extras on their damn lunch break. Retreating back inside the house, Ben almost becomes a part of that feast because Cooper doesn't open the door. And this leads to the little weasel getting punched in his face. It's so easy to put the classic zombie in a box and say, okay, they must move and act a certain way. And when they don't, you automatically don't enjoy it. I used to feel that way a little bit. However, I have come to appreciate subcategories of zombie with all different sets of rules 
and I ended up enjoying things a lot more than I previously did. So seeing these as ghouls, the way they're meant, it's a scary thought. Slow moving, sure, not smart, okay, but they either know or believe that food is in this house, and as more pile up, growing in numbers, they try anything they can to break in. Building onto the tension, not only is Ben keeping ghouls out, but trouble pops off inside the house as Harry Cooper snatches the gun off the floor. This is something I call ruin and reward. It's a nice writer's balancing act. This is part of the reward. Seeing the jerk get what he deserves. Holy get what you f***ing deserve! Still, it's murder, and it's dark on purpose, and it's really good. <laughs> That's what you're going with? You couldn't do another take? Okay. Being underused, Barbara finally snaps out of it, and she goes to help Mrs. Cooper. The kid's snacking on her daddy's arm. It's a great scene and a great performance by the actor here. Oh, baby. Baby. And the little ghoul grabs a weapon in what became an iconic kill for its day, even going so far as to turn the screams of the mother into a horrific squealing soundtrack. I love this scene. It's one of my favorites in Night of the Living Dead. And again, for newer zombie fans, you might not have thought classic zombies used weapons, which are remarks I see more and more, but Romero ghouls for sure did use weapons, especially later on. Friggin' trust me. Now, a little bit of a self-plug aimed at you zombie fans, but my graphic novel Doomsday Kingdom pays homage to this aspect, having different stages of zombie. It's different from this movie, but stage one is called the Weepers or Stalkers, and they use clubs, knives, rocks, etc. They're called Weepers because they cry in pain when they're not hunting. DoomsdayKingdom.com if interested. Digital issues of one to four available now on the website, and issue five coming soon. Having Johnny come back is also one of my favorite parts. I remember being blown away as a kid watching this moment. I was so certain she'd be one of the protected characters and our hero Ben would keep her alive until the end, maybe even dying in the process. Now this was the 90s by the time I saw it. Anyhow, since he loses his glasses in the fight, tussle, they have him wearing distinctive gloves so the audience can immediately recognize him, which became an iconic scene, everyone remembering that gloved hand gripping the wall. This shit is cold and cruel. Johnny ironically drags her ass out to be eaten alive as she screams. With Ben being the last man standing, he has no hope to keep the ghouls out as they bust through the door, the windows, any way they can get in. After all that arguing about the basement being a death trap, Ben has no choice but to retreat down to the basement another dose of irony. However, there's a ray of hope. It's the following morning. Identifying the truck where the young couple died shows that the rescue effort is making their way closer to the house. See that? My man, Ben made it. Alright Vince, hit him in the head, right between the eyes. Oh. This is one vicious ass ending, and I think it's awesome as hell. And you gotta appreciate it coming from the independents because Hollywood hacks usually lack the balls to do this type of ending. It's done quick, there's no bullshit. Before you can even think to say don't go near the window, bang, he's dead. The photos to finish out are really cool, but they are a grisly salt in the wound slideshow. We even see Ben unceremoniously thrown on a bonfire right next to the first ghoul to attack Barbara. Ouch. And that was Night of the Living Dead, 1968, directed by George Romero. It's old and it's insanely low budget, 
yet it still maintains a captivating legacy. Unfortunately, I do believe the love for this classic will begin to fade due to the rough quality, especially as those who are more nostalgic about this ultimately age out. And I wish one day someone with the right love and passion would make a new Night of the Living Dead that is a fresh retelling that stays true to the classic, doesn't change it too much, but gives it a modern look, a modern shine, followed by a connected dawn and day. But now let's get to the ranking. We remove the F's from the A's, and that gives us a unique map cinema score of 26. Now our rating system goes from negative to positive, so it's still sitting at a decent rank. However, because of the age and obviously extremely low budget, this monumental zombie genre movie just couldn't rise up and grab that insanely high score. However, nothing can overlook its importance in cinematic history. Let us know below how you feel about this movie and also tell me your flaws and awes with Dawn of the Dead because that is next. Thank you very much Map Mob for your support. I really can't keep these up without it and we're actually going to start doing little mini campaigns to drum up some new support and to get people over at Patreon. I want to pump these out. I love the flaw and all review style and if you guys love it as much as I do, holla at your boy. Links are in the video description. Thank you and I'll see you for the next movie flaw and all review, Dawn of the Dead, the OG.